the Bushy and Bobo Show, a healthy scratch podcast. Here's your hosts, Kyle Bush and Brian Rager. Welcome back, finally, to the Bushy and Bobo Show. It's episode 23. We are almost a year old. I think our first episode was February... 21st. 21st, 2021. So we made it. Did the research. We made the year, and we are going to the top still. But, hey, it's been a second since... It's been roughly uh, a month since our last one. But we've said that a few times now. Man, life gets in the way. Yeah, well... You're, you're Papa now, so just call me Papa Bushy. Yeah, that's been fun. So it's right like right now, I'm the only one in the house with a dog who just turned two yesterday. Yeah, happy birthday, Ovi. Happy birthday, Ovi. And uh, it's kind of interesting because, like, I'm like, oh, I don't have any responsibilities right now. It feels nice. I can just go do a podcast and just jerk around with Bobo, <laughs> just talk about hockey or about nothing. Yeah, is it like been a while since we did one of these and then fuck, it's been a while since like we actually like saw each other in person so yeah well no you came over uh what was that it was last week in, in sar or a couple yeah, days ago days ago but that was what the, the first hell time you... in forever well it's been a second yeah well yeah. that was the pond hockey we played yeah right before Probably. right before uh the little one was born there so right so no she's doing good so uh we're gonna try and raise uh, a good hockey fan and hopefully she doesn't, you know, go for the, you know, the Leafs or, you know, the Bruins or the Canucks or someone stupid hey, like that. Hey, hey, hey. So you got to you got to make sure that she's in a good place. So once we retire from this, she, she can take the, over the mantle, exactly. but like she's got to earn it. Oh, you, yeah, you know, absolutely. you're not just going to be given this. This is this is hard work. This is okay? this is such a grind. And uh... it's a grind. Daily grind. Anyway, so uh, I almost did a, a, a pod just myself of Red Wings topics because I had so much, but I'm going to try and, you know, condense it down into like a quick little 10 minute thing. But, and I do want to hear your thoughts because I'm, I'm obviously, I don't live and die with this team, but I'm definitely more hard on them because I'm a fan. And you got a little bit of, yeah, you got that little bias there and then you'll, you'll, I try to go at this without bias because that's I when I was younger, I was definitely like a Red Wings homer. I was, you know, they were awesome and and you couldn't tell me otherwise. Like I'm a fan of the game more now, and that's why we talk about everybody. I'm not living and dying with these guys anymore. I'm definitely like a still a fan, but not like I was when I was younger. But I can still look at a, a team or player or whatever and go, you know, what the hell are we doing here? Or hey, this guy's great because yeah. You know, the the state of the Red Wings right now, they're actually right in the middle of the league, uh, right kind of in the middle of the pack, which uh, I would say at the beginning of the year maybe wasn't like what I thought was going to happen. Um, maybe like a few months into the year, seeing how like the rookies were playing and how, you know, Larkin is having a career year, Bertuzzi's like, having a career now I'm kind of like, yeah, that's probably where they should be. If they were in the bottom five, I'd be really upset about it. But the expectation at the beginning of the year might have been that they were in the bottom five. Uh, so that being said, I I want to talk about Jeff Blashill oh. because he's been everyone's whipping boy and it's been up and down and there's been moments, right? There's been moments where I'm like, he gets it. He, he, he's finally getting it. But there are games where I'm just like, I I don't understand what is going through the coaching staff's mind. Now, when I say Jeff Blashill, I would probably extend that to the assistant coaches as well. And I'm going to use an example. So the Toronto Maple Leafs played in Detroit. I was a couple of weeks ago on Saturday, right? And I think you know what happened. You remember what happened in that game, Bobo? Detroit was up four to two, right? They're playing. They, they played their first two periods were probably the best I've seen them play all year. Now I haven't watched every single game, but they looked very, very good. They were on the attack. They were the aggressors. Toronto looked terrible. They didn't know how to defend. Uh, You know, they're coming at them with speed, um, cycling the puck, finishing their hits, you know, getting a ton of quality scoring chances. They're up four to two and going into the third period. I I mean, that was the first game that I watched with my daughter. 
and I almost threw across the room because <laughs> oh. I was like, "What the hell is going on?" Like it, it, they no, they I, lost now, they now lost seven four. That it's I do remember five unanswered. Yeah. yeah, and and it was something that I I I hit my breaking point with Jeff Blashill and maybe that coaching staff because it wasn't as much as like, okay, the players are on the ice doing what they need to do or not doing what they need to do. Something changed in that intermission, something systematically and tactically changed. They went into a full prevent defense, which here's the, here's the problem. If Jeff Blashill and his coaching staff doesn't realize that they don't have the talent to do that, that's a huge problem because they clearly can't do it. They've shown it time and time again when they have one goal leads or two goal leads. And in the third period, they blow it. And it's it, it happens more often than not. But that was the one where if you're going to sit back against a team like Toronto, they are going to fist you. Yeah, they got so much firepower there and guys who will take shots, make those plays. And like I said, if you're not going to put any pressure on or you're just going to try to just sit back and be defensive, that's the worst thing to do, especially against a team like Toronto. Because they're just going to pick you apart, which is exactly what happened. And exactly. like Michael Bunting apparently is like the next coming of Gretzky. Like just that game scores a hat trick. I'm like, I hate this guy. What the hell? Well, there, there you go. From? That's it. Like I said, you're having a guy like that score a hat trick or whatever. He is good. I just, I just hate the fact that like he's lighting them, but it was a full prevent. They were disorganized, discombobulated, um, and just didn't look like the team in the first two periods. It's a total coward move to, as a coach, to go into a prevent defense, being up two goals in the NHL with 20 minutes to play against a top tier team like Toronto. I said two goal lead is one of the worst leads to have, right? Like, because it's, yeah, but at the same time, why did you change anything? You are crushing them. It's four to two. There's nothing wrong with your game. You know what he should have done and what a coach that is capable of coaching an NHL team should have done? Hey guys, let's go get number five. Let's yeah, go get six. Let's fuck these guys up. Let's get the next goal to blow this thing open because they were defending by attacking. You and keep it was your foot working. On the gas. You keep your foot on the gas or you're putting your shots I, on your I honestly the think that totally yeah, I, I honestly think that Toronto did change up their their system a little bit, but not enough that that was the whole story. It was Detroit's defense that just wasn't existent, right? So and they couldn't attack. They looked like a, a, a team from a year ago. It just it was astounding. And one guy that I will say has become my new Jonathan Erickson. There's always a guy, right? I'm sure you have one for Vancouver. Who is it? Oh, well, fuck, it was Louis Erickson for the longest <laughs> time, for the three years he was there. Fucking pile on. Uh, who is it right now? Don't really have one, or? I, yeah, and, boy. And the reason I, I don't really have one right now is because I haven't been able to watch as much because I can't stay up until. That's what sucks about being a Vancouver fan. Yeah. 10, 10, 10 o'clock at night. Okay, <laughs> but my guy is D- Danny DeKaiser. D- this guy. It shouldn't be in the in the NHL at all. And he's making five and a half million. He's unrestricted this year. He's done. I guarantee you, there's no way. I don't want to say that. He'll be the way I've said it. Advocator. Like he'll get signed by Edmonton to be like a like a third pair defenseman because Ken Holland loves the Kaiser. Danny the Kaiser's like he's like a reindeer out on the ice. He's got no strength. He has no power. All I see him do consistently is somehow have the puck in the neutral zone and just wire a slap shot into the corner, like just dumps it in. That's all he does. And for some reason, this guy's like, this guy's metrics are just so super low. Like his war is like non-existent. He's out there in situations where the team is up by a goal or in a uh, situation where they need to defend. And I don't know if Blashill thinks because he's out in the defensive zone, he's a good defender. I think you're in the defensive zone because he's out there. Okay. If you had someone out, literally anybody else on that team on defense should be out there over Danny to De- Danny to Kaiser should be getting nine minutes of ice time. He shouldn't even be on the team. If we're being honest, like every single player, that's a defenseman on team. Okay. Cider, obviously, right. Chronic, yeah. obviously. Nick Letty, I mean, he's having a bad year, but I'd still put him out there. Um, 
Gustav Lindstrom is having a really good season as a, you know, a young guy, I'd put him out there. Hell Mark, St- put Mark Stahl out there. I mean, he's not that great either, but I'll take him over Danny to Kaiser any, any day, any freaking day. We got Troy Stetcher's back, finally played his first game, but you know what I mean? It's just one of those things where I, De Kaiser has three assists. He's a minus this year. I don't put that much. Send the Grand Rapids so he can go and advocate her out in, in China right now. Yeah. I, so I, I, I just don't understand why he's on an NHL team. I just wanted to say that. He's your whipping. He's your whipping. I just wanted buddy. to clear it up. He's the guy. But we only have to deal with him until April. And then see ya. Shoot him out of a cannon into the sun. Goodbye. Unless uh, Iserman could like somehow finesse Kenny Holland to take uh, to take him at deadline, that would be the funniest shit I've ever seen. There's no way they can because like Edmonton, like I said, they have thirteen dollars in cap space. But <laughs> like that would be actually hilarious if they somehow managed to pull that off. <laughs> Here you go, Kenny. Have him. Give me a third round pick. Like, but uh, third round next year. Fuck, I'll do that. Speaking about management, uh, the Red Wings in like. For a second, I thought it was a PR move, but I'm like, wait a minute. No, that's not a PR move. They brought back Nick Lidstrom as like the like VP of hockey ops, something like that. They brought him back into the management team. It's a smart uh, move. It's a smart move because he's just like, the perfect human, right? But he's been over in Sweden, like, you know, kind of like scouting and watching the, you know, prospects over there, like Edvinson and like Albert Johansson. And they, they have a lot of guys in the Swedish Elite League. I thought that was kind of interesting. They're bringing him back into the fold. I like it. Yeah. Uh, you said you got Eisman, you got him working, like Lidstrom and Eisman working together. Eisman's proven already, like what he can do as a GM. Lidstrom, he's one of the, probably one of the smartest defensemen to play the game. In, and now you have him like in the managerial side of things. And, and he's learning things. Yeah, exactly. It's, and it was it's very, I was going to say it was interesting. Eisenman. I was going to say, sorry, it was interesting because he, Eiserman said during even their playing days, how Lidstrom was like his, the best sounding board that he had as a player. So naturally that would be like in management too, right? Exactly. It's, it's sort of, it's similar to like when Eiserman retired and whatnot and how he, they brought him into the, into the fold in Detroit. It looks like it's a similar, similar role, whether Lidstrom would down the road, go take another job. I, who knows? You I never, never thought Iserman would, but he left to Tampa. But, but you see that with a lot of these, you know, guys. I mean, Pat Verbeek, uh, you know, awesome assistant GM, one of Iserman's buddies. He's in Anaheim now, right? He yeah. got the Anaheim job. Uh, and now, actually, um, uh, Sean Horkoff is the assistant GM for Detroit. So he got elevated oh, from, really? from, yeah, like player development and scouting and stuff. And they, they bumped him up to the assistant uh, general manager. So all these guys players, them. right? All yeah, the guys we grew up with. was a guy that... You- if you if you hate on Nick Lidstrom, you're a bad person in life. So. <laughs> There's no, the only thing you can hate about him is that he's amazing at everything. Yeah, right. Like so. you, you got to respect the game, and like I said, if he's he, he's one of those guys, he's he was elite, like the captain, the leader, and all that. And uh, I I think it, like him coming into into the front office there is a, uh, like I said, it's, it's not it's definitely not a PR move. It's definitely going to be a yeah. I got way too excited. It was just like, oh my God, he's back. You know what I said? I was like, now do Fedorov. (laughs) Like, get get Shani to get out of get him out of Toronto. Bring him back. (laughs) So, and then then the last thing I wanted to bring up, uh, just more Red Wings esque, uh, is the Calder Trophy race. And I wanted to hear your thoughts. Two of the top five guys, or two of the three of the top five guys, right? I mean, right now, you know, yeah, Moritz Sider, Lucas Raymond, Trevor Zegers of Anaheim, and then like. Anton Lundell, Florida. They're kind of the top four. I would and then they say. got one. Velkovich is uh, number five. Eh, yeah, he won't. He won't get it. He's been. Um, he's been awesome. But he, you know, he's twenty six, right? Like he's older, so he's, he's, he's a goalie technically too, still right? a rookie. But so goalies are. Who do you think right now should win the and and don't do it because I'm a Red Wings fan. But who do you think right now should win the Calder Trophy? And also. I said should win. Who do you think will win and why? And I'll tell you my thoughts. Should win? Yeah. I think I think the little bit of, that I have watched from Detroit, Cider has been playing really well. I uh, I just being you're the best defenseman on, on your team already. You're a rookie. 
you're cut you just came into the fold and like mm-hmm. you have no help so so you're taking you know, he's help. playing with DeKaiser. <laughs> yeah like he, he's like, he's the cornerstone of that defense like he is the the foundation there to, to build around but uh what's his face from Anaheim I think so will in it yeah just because of what he's been doing like he's scoring but then he's doing it in filthy ways too right now so just off yeah. of right now that's why he would win it yeah done it twice uh, so yeah and then Raymond has actually got more points than him like Raymond's leading rookies in points and then Cider has basically as many points as both of them as a defenseman. Yeah. So here, here's what I'd say. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Red Wings fans after this. Okay. Statistically and analytically, there is no debate. Cider should win the Calder. N- no, no problem. Like no questions asked. He is without a th- He, and this is maybe a bold take. Maybe not. I feel like Cider is going to be top 10 in Norris trophy voting. He is that essential you heard to it that here. team if you take him away from the red wings they're a bottom five team immediately because he is so dominant back there and so he's a special player and like it's it's i i gush over him because he's a red wing and I, we haven't had that in so long a, a player come along where it's like oh, holy crap this kid's am-. maybe larkin to an extent that was who he came in as a 19 year old and was like really really good can you imagine if Cider had somewhat of a decent defensive partner or was on a team with a good deal. Like if he was mm-hmm. in Tampa playing with Hedman. Oh yeah. I mean, it would be insane. Or even a it guy playing happen, like, but like, like uh, Ekman Larson, even with them. Well, he's, he's playing well, Ekman Larson. I mean, but he's playing like Hedman. <laughs> like, yeah. We don't need him. Like it's, that's, but I, I understand what you're saying. If you played with better players, but like analytics, they cut right through that. They don't yeah, care that's, what you're playing yeah, with. You said analytics. But it's, it's, more, it's more impressive that he's doing it the way he's doing it. With no I mean, he scored the other day, got the game winner, just an absolute like laser, like top shelf. I'm like, holy shit, this kid is unbelievable. Like just laying the body. I mean, and I love Lucas Raymond too, and he's putting up the points as well. Um, he's a, definitely a big part of Larkin and uh, having like a career year. He was a big part of when Bertuzzi was a part of that line, having 23 goals on the season. Because he's a good playmaker, too. He can shoot the puck and all that. Zegras, yeah. Okay. I'm going to talk to Red Wings fans right now. Okay? All, like, four of you that are listening to this. Um, one of them. Here's, a, here's, <laughs> here's something that I, I just want people to, to remember. The Calder Trophy voting – the Calder Trophy doesn't matter. Okay? At all. Okay? We have two finalists, right, who – it's just a trophy, right? Who – would you rather have these two guys and like, who cares about the Calder? These guys are already developing into suit potential superstars. Zegers is a good player too. He's going to be what he is. Right. And who knows? Like, that's the thing is like, he looks really good right now. So does Raymond. So does Cider. Like they, they're all young players. They can go in that sophomore slump. Things can happen. Um, I feel like Anton Lundell is having an amazing season because he's on Florida. He's a really good player, but yeah. his stats are probably a little pushed up because because they're we're, and we're gonna go through Florida at the end of the pod just because they're nasty, dude. Like you guys are insane. Yeah. But for for Red Wings fans, don't don't worry about it. Um, I'm seeing things on Twitter where it's kind of embarrassing to be a Red Wings fan because people are just shitting all over Trevor Zegers, and I don't. I'm not a big fan of him either because it's all flash. Most of it, it is. It's <laughs> you know, it's like oh, I'm gonna goals. we're gonna bring him out for the All Star game and showcase him, even though he's not a part of the all you know what i mean he's not on the roster i was like that's kind of like what are we doing here every you know can you imagine if mo cider was american oh my god shoving him up your butt the the poster boy of defenseman in the nhl exactly raymond swedish like trevor zegers is an american and he's fun he's obviously a personality and uh He's got some hands. Yeah, he did the Michigan. He did the dish again. Big fucking deal. You know, it's cool and it's awesome. And I was like, wow, I can't believe this kid pulled that off. I mean, someone hit him, <laughs> like, but it doesn't matter. You know, if it's going to be a popularity, a lot of these are popularity contests exactly. anyway, right? Like the writers are just going to gush over him. And I don't know why we have sports writers voting on awards anyway. Like they know shit, right? It's like, it should be the players should vote on every single award. That's how it it's, should be, right? They like have the one. Like it's they have the, the Ted Lindsay award is the only one that yes. the players vote, right? 
but like Wish. said, like like said for Red Wings fans and all that, like yeah, if you if none of the if Raymond or Cider don't win the Calder, who cares? They're both like said, they're both finalists. They're, they're both, both cornerstones. Two of your young, amazing talents that are developing probably a lot quicker than people would have thought, or their game yeah. is just. So that that's my Red Wings thoughts. Um, and then we were saying about the All Star game with like with Zegras and all that, but like uh, the All Star game is always such a polarizing topic for people. And uh, I watched it. I watched the skills. I watched the the three on three, all three games. And uh, I got to say, like, it it was okay. I mean, it was something to do. I mean, we've been watching a lot of TV lately, (laughs) you know, hanging out with the baby. So I was just like, oh, let's just throw it on. And, but um, how do you, what do you think about like the all-star format? And there's been a ton of different formats. They've tried, I'll give them, they've tried a bunch of different things. No. Why is that? I don't like this, the whole division. Like, I had to have one person from each team or whatever. It's an all-star game. You want the best of the best there. Do it that Just go back to simple East versus West. I was going to bring that up. And I also... Or go North America versus the world again. Like That, that was, was fun. That was pretty cool. ever, though, with the collars. Oh, and especially the goalies had, like, the inverted colors and the, the Europeans yeah. had the collars and... <laughs> Right. So I, no, I just, I just, I want, I want to go back to East first West. And you're right with the whole, like, Hey, we should have the best players there. Right. Yeah. It, it, that's how it should be. And the best players weren't at this, you know, and, oh. and you want to showcase your best players. Tom um, Wilson's the best player. Like he was the replacement. I, Roby. Like yeah. he's having a good year, but like I looked at it. Um, I don't have the roster again, but I made my own just based off of like who was having good seasons and didn't care about, you know, if any team had a representative, that's and went through good, and, but he was not an all-star. Yeah, I did. I did East versus West. And there's teams where like, um, I went through for the East and like non-biased, like Larkin was like fourth line. Like I did an actual lineup, right? I didn't yeah. do three on three. I did just like back 10 years ago, he was on the fourth line. Like he made it right. But it was like just he just made it. Oh, that awesome bubble. Isn't that insane? Minutes. He's their best player, you know, even cider. Like, I don't think I had or did I? I wonder if I had him on it. Uh maybe maybe I you know what'd be I interesting? I did. He was close. You know what'd be something interesting? Something do something similar that the NBA does. How they have like their their all-star game, but they also have like a rookie versus sophomore game. They used to do that. Well, yeah, the, yeah, the young guns, the young, the guns, young guns game. game. Yeah. yeah. But they it's, could all do now, that. it's all now a lot more the, the skills competition that they want to do. And... Well, because the young guns would probably mostly be on teams that weren't represented in the all-star game because they're probably not doing that well. So like you think about uh, like say Montreal, like Nick Suzuki, right? Cole Caulfield, like they're not going to be in the all-star game, but they could be in, the, the young guns, guns. right? Uh, yeah. Detroit, like Raymond, a- Anaheim, like put Zegers in there, put Troy Terry, like, like well, Troy Terry is like 25, 20, whatever he is. But you know what I mean? Like that would be teams that maybe, you know, are more not being represented naturally in the all-star game. That you so that you could keep prospects. the all-star game itself to a true. Right. But it's never going to be competitive. No, it's not going to. It I used to be. That. Yeah, it used to be, but it never will be. It's more, I found the skills competition was more like, for the kids, you know oh, what yeah, I mean. Absolutely. I remember being a being a kid and watching that and thinking it was awesome. And the same thing. Oh, with the NBA. Yeah, like just seeing all the players out there with their actual like jerseys on. Should you know, doing the hardest shot and doing fastest skater and all that stuff. Do you think the NHL should adapt something that the MLB does, where the All Star Game actually means something? No, no, God no. The All Star Game shouldn't mean keep, shit. Keep the MLB fun, does the stupidest thing ever. Keep I could it as a fun, relaxing. I could have a twenty wins more in the MLB and not have home field advantage in the World Series. That's so stupid. That makes yeah. no sense. So no, absolutely not. Because no, just, it's not gonna. If they have an, a million dollar prize and no one gives a shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm. I'm just thinking like because ways to to make it like to change it. Like it's an All Star Game. It should be fun. Like you're there to. Just enjoy the weekend and whatnot, but I'm just like trying to think of other sports and how they do theirs. Pro Bowl doesn't mean shit, and like NBA the Pro Bowl is the worst mean... one oh, because Pro it's Bowl. a contact sport and it's like no one wants to get hurt. Uh, it's kind of like walking around. It's embarrassing, but like this sidebar. one at least there were some guys that were playing hard. Sidebar on the NFL Pro Bowl, like with it being Super Bowl weekend, 
they had a flag football game or whatever, like FaZe Clan or versus I Apple. Saw that. <laughs> you see Brett Favre throw four interceptions. Did he really? Yep. <laughs> I didn't see that. No. I know he's part of FaZe though. Yeah, and like three of them were for pick sixes. So is Kyler Murray. Yeah. That's oh my god. Man. And the, the whole drama with him right now. But yeah. Well, I mean, that's something that we'll never really we don't really get that much in uh in the NHL. Like trade deadlines coming up. And like the NBA just had theirs and there was a lot of trades where I was like, oh wow, so much drama, four way, four dude. team trades and shit like that. Now here's the, here's the whole NHL thing is where's Ben Sherratt going to end up? Like if you're trading for Ben Sherratt and that's the, like, what are we doing here? We need more one for one trades. We're not even going to talk about the trade deadline yet. We'll have our, our deadline episode eventually, but like, got to find it's the day not going to be one. exciting. I got to find no a day and book it off work just so we could have five hours of absolutely nothing. And I, then, uh, I think I'm going to look too. It's on a Monday again. So I might do it too. I'm, just I'm to Googling it right now as we, uh, as yeah. you segue into our next topic. Yeah. The next topic is again, again, somehow the Edmonton Oilers, I mean, every single freaking podcast, we have to talk about the Oilers because there's just so much shit happening. Like Monday, number March one, 21st. yeah, I'm in the, the first thing was the whole Evander Kane, uh, drama they, the they signed him yeah they signed him to like a one-year deal and like that was going to solve their problems uh i don't get it i mean y- y- sure i mean the thing is it it's just it's a total panic move on ken holland's part he can't do anything else he can't make a trade because he spent to the cap he can't make a trade because he has nothing to trade you know he wants he old has, man Mike Smith. He wants old man Duncan Keith. He wants. You have nothing left. It's it's like so you have to just. Oh, oh my God! I have to get a Vander Kane no matter what, and he's gonna help. It's like, uh, all right. I mean, probably it's not your problem. You know what I mean? Your issue runs way deeper. You, like your defense stinks. Your goaltending stinks. Your depth scoring stinks. You're not gonna trade for a guy stink. like Mark Andre Fleury. You can't afford him. They should have traded for Mark Andre Fleury in the first place. Think about how dumb Ken Holland is. Yes. He trades, he trades for Duncan Keith when they know Duncan Keith wants to leave and go that way, like to Edmonton or Calgary or something. And they they gave up assets to get him and didn't have any retained salary, right? Which opened up cap space in Chicago for Chicago to go get Mark Andre go. Fleury for yep. nothing. Like yeah, like I don't even think Edmonton could afford like Braden Braden Holtby's only like two mil or whatever. Would you rather be. have Duncan Keith or Mark Andre Fleury? Mark Andre Fleury, because you want yeah. you've got to build from your net. Right, Duncan Keith is not what he was, but Ken Holland will sign a thirty-eight year old player because he thinks he's still good. Then it's just not that's not how you manage anymore. Like it's it's not going to be an old man sport anymore. You can't have a thirty-nine year old goalie. Like it's just not going to work. <laughs> like he's like, well, we had Hasek in 08. Oh, the funniest thing is I saw looking, someone he's looking at him a, getting uh what's his face? Uh Robert Lang out of retirement. Yeah, exactly. Edmonton. Kelly an, Bookberger. Yeah, there's an Oilers slappy on Twitter, some writer or something saying, um, com- trying to compare the Oilers now to the 08 Red Wings and how they st- how they had like this streak of no wait, 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 wait. How they had a streak of not uh they had a losing streak or something. They lost a bunch in a row. And oh, that Edmonton can get over this. Like, dude, Detroit ha- Detroit won the President's Trophy, even though they had that losing streak. They had in they had Cronwall was hurt, uh, Datsuk got hurt, Zetter, like they had tons of injuries, and they all came back eventually. And they also didn't have to make like seven coaching changes in five years, no, or seven years. They were an awesome team already, and they just overcame a bunch of injuries. And yeah, they they didn't play that well at the end of the year, but they won the President's Trophy at like the beginning of March. Like they were unbelievable. So it's, I'm like, that's a stupid comparison. Yeah. And then and then they fire Dave Tippett because again, that's the only other thing you can do is blame the coach. Which I don't think. I mean, I don't think there's anything he could have done. I mean this is clearly a manager issue because he's the one that constructed this team to win this year. And it's not coaching. It's, it's really not like they have Jay Woodcroft. Now I saw that they had a, a quote of Ken Holland saying that he's, you know, he sees him kind of like Jeff Blashill, like an AHL coach that comes. And I'm like, that's not a ringing endorsement. He probably thinks it is, but uh, it, this Oilers team, man, uh, discombobulated. You Eight can coaches see that since 2010. Yeah, it's the, stupid. The top, the top two players both have had issues in a press conference recently. 
I mean, Leon Dreisaitl was going at it. Uh, I'm not, I don't even know the guy's name. Matheson? Buddy. Matheson or something? something Basically like asks Leon Dreisaitl what the problem is. And Dreisaitl basically says, like, everything. <laughs> Which is not wrong. He's literally saying, yeah, everything. And they've been asked this question 7 million times. And the way that Dreisaitl answered it was, like, kind of like yeah man every what do you want me to say like we suck right now i can't say we fucking suck so i'm gonna say everything's wrong we need to fix everything and as someone that's interviewed leon dreitzel before right i, I can Listen, say that, that he exactly we know how to talk to leon he's a he's, good guy he's a great guy and you just don't ask that question but matheson you hear what he said leon why are you so pissy yeah what if we what do you think he's gonna say man you just question. asked him the question how why are you guys so shit and he's like because we are i don't know like what do you want me to say why are you so pissy he's like i'm not like what a stupid ass question from the media and it's just to get a story because then it was a story well absolutely funny enough is like probably a good move on this guy's part because now he's got a story mm, fucking pissy you know that dry settle yeah. freaked out at the press conference and then the some specter guy wrote an article about the Oilers and said that McDavid couldn't hold a candle to like Sidney Crosby or something like that. McDavid's and, the best player in the NHL. Yeah. And at the end of this one press conference, before they could cut it, they're like, okay, the press conference is over. McDavid is like, Hey spec, can I have a word? <laughs> you didn't, did you see that? I, so funny. I, I he probably was like, what are you I, doing? I, I, I went and watched it afterwards. Once you're we like, yo, check this out. I was like, dude, this is so bad. The media is like just crushing them too. McDavid's like, can you stop writing this shit? Like, it's not helping. <laughs> There's so much like between the media and the Oilers, the goaltending. Like, when uh, was it Mike Smith or, or was it uh, Koskinen? Koskinen saying, yeah, oh, it's, not, it's not my like. Rolling yeah, I can let in seven. We don't score. Like, it doesn't matter. We don't score in three <laughs> games. I, I can't do that. Like, there's so much discombobulation with that team they suck like it's so funny dude i just it's, it's a, so we're funny beating a dead horse we say it every episode like we're trying not to but it's just like it just keeps popping up and then there's always hall, yeah kenny holland with stupid quotes like that with the lashel thing and then he's like oh our, our season's like a toilet seat going up and down and up and down <laughs> he couldn't use roller coaster he thought of toilet seat <laughs> well, it describes the year that they're having they're they're absolutely in the shitter well there was there was one uh Actually, I'm going to pull it up on our website. There was a quote that I put on healthyscratch.ca if you guys want to check that out because we need some more uh, website traffic for sure. Um, <laughs> and it was, a, it was a while ago. They were asking him about like a... Uh, I, I forget really exactly what he was talking about, but I, it was an actual quote. And I remember it was, it was in the off season, I'm pretty sure, because I think I was on my... Uh, on my honeymoon. Here it is. July 28th. This is an actual Ken Holland quote. Okay. And I quote, unless you want, and this is him talking about like the salary cap. Okay. Unless you want to be at 73, $74 million, 75 or 81.5 less the four, you know, you need uh you need a little, that's your, that's your cushion. So unless you, if you want to run your team, 70, uh, 76, Six, you know, the that's 81.5 less the 4.1. Unless you want to go, you leave that money out there. That's a quote. <laughs> I swear to God. Look it up. Dude, it's hilarious. It's like, what is he talking about? Sky, what is he talking about? The answer is nine. <laughs> it's nine. And I don't even know what that is. It's, you know, what, you know what that reminds me of? Like that quote you just read? It reminds me of Pat Caputo. Yeah. Well, you know them. It's just kind of like whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so the Oilers are in shambles right now. The Blackhawks. What else is new? The Blackhawks are in shambles. It's just like every oh. every week there's something with these guys. I mean, not even to, to say, did you see? Well, there was the whole uh uh what was the guy's name? Brad something. Got his name stricken off the cup, the yeah. whole sexual assault thing with Kyle Beach and all that. We kind of talked about yeah, that. A little bit. Um their Rockford team, same thing happened. The trainer. Did you hear about that? Same thing. Whoa. Sexual misconduct. I'm like, oh my God, what the hell is happening? Ay, ay, ay. And then this is a segue into the owner of the Blackhawks, Rocky Wirtz. Okay. So let's go back. But here's the thing before we do that, let's go back. We'll go back to uh, when Bill Wirtz's dad ran the team. Um, the Blackhawks were cheap. 
they were just the you know central division and and you know that whole Norris division they were just a punching bag like they never were really that good they had players Tony Amante, Eric, Eric Daze, Daze. yeah, they had, Ronick, Chris Chelios, they Ed had, Belfour. Yeah, they had some guys, but they never like they would black out games. You know, they it, it was just a really weirdly run organization. And then eventually, Rocky Wirtz got the team, got them back on TV, like got spent to the salary cap. You know, like built the team, and they won three cups. Right now, all this shit comes out you know, with all these, you know, allegations and, and misconducts and, and just the way that they handled the whole thing with like Quinville and uh, you know, with Stan Bowman stepping down instead of getting yeah. canned. And it's like, you know, Kevin Chevel day. I've no, nothing really have. It's like, it's very, it's strange, right? The way that it was all handled. And the whole point was, this is the problem with how these things were handled is it wasn't handled. It was just, it was heard of. And then, like swept, swept it under the rug. rug and they just didn't do anything about it. Don't ask, don't talk about it. Just... And that's, and that's the point right now at a open house town hall, Chicago Blackhawks kind of media thing. It was Rocky Wirtz, his son, which I forget his name, um, Eddie Olchick and someone else. And there was a reporter that asked him about the Kyle beach situation and basically said, or asked a very softball question too. Hey, uh, Rocky, like, what do you got? I don't even think he asked Rocky words. He just said, you know, what are the Blackhawks doing um, going forward that will prevent, you know, this type of thing happening in the future? And Rocky words, son was going to reply to it and and say, well, actually, you know, here's what we're going to do. And which is all that they needed to say. Yeah, we're going to we have a program we're starting. You know, we're going to do this. We're going to train people. We're going to make sure that this is we have, uh, you know, accountability, right? That this will lo- no longer happen. If someone comes to us, we're going to deal with it yeah. immediately and properly. Be and proactive that's it. it. Be proactive and be done. Now that could all just be talk, right? But Rocky Wirtz, for some reason, thought that it would be a good idea to say that it's none of their, none of his, none of the reporter's business, which means it's none of our business either. He doesn't work. That guy doesn't work for the team. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter what, you know, I'm not going to talk about 2010 anymore. And the guy's like, well, I'm not talking about 2010. I'm talking about now. He's like, no, we're not talking about it. And basically said like, this shut is none up. of your business and yeah. shut up. And wh- why I'm basically, why do I have to talk about this? You know what that said to me? I've paid the fines. We went through the whole court thing. Why do I have to keep talking about this? This isn't a problem anymore, but that in itself is the problem. He's the guy at the top, right? And Wayne Gretzky said it best on TNT. He said, and he's very, not a really outspoken guy, right? Gretzky. No. He's like, if I'm a parent of a kid, you know, that's maybe going to play for that team. Like, would I really want them in that, in in that that organization? And I'm like, no, like you wouldn't because the guy at the top just basically said he doesn't give a fuck. Like this is done and over with. We're not going to change anything. But the son, I think it's Danny Wirtz, was like, we're going to, here's what we're going to do. And he's like, no, 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 no. That's not their business. Yeah, Rocky, it is. You fucked up. And you need to say, you can't just say like, um, hey, my building burnt down again. This is the second time it's happened. How are we going to prevent this in the future? We're going to put in some fire alarms. We're going to get some sprinklers. You know, we're going to have some cameras or whatever, right? So you can't just not do that, right? You have to tell people it's such a softball question that it's a softball answer. You yeah. let your son answer and go, here's what we're doing. Right. And and that's all. And then you move on. It but now like it's a big thing. Fuck all about it. He just and then, it. and then there was a statement on Twitter after, which was just like, it's just the worst statement ever. Like, Oh, you know, I, I spoke out of turn. It's like, you, you still didn't answer the question at no. all. You got to so, be held account- accountable for your, for your actions, uh, your organizations. Like it's, yeah. you're that, you're the owner. You're, it's So it's kind of like, how can you, how can you be the owner of a team and, and, and say stuff like that? Right. It's, it is crazy. And then the commissioner of the NHL and, and the, the whole league, because they're just puppets for the owners, they didn't say anything either. Really. They're like, yeah, you know, like that's just what it is. And it's like, this is what they're talking about. This is the problem, right? Like if someone has something going on and it doesn't even have to be like sexual misconduct, it, it could be racism. It could be discrimination. It could be, you know, uh, physical abuse. It could be anything like that, right? Yeah, Mental yeah. abuse. 
you know, this isn't ever going to be dealt with in the proper way because there's no, nothing in place. You know, they say they want things to change, but they still won't work with that diversity alliance. Right. I think it's like Akeem Alou and like a yeah. lot of people, like players of color. They're not working with them officially. You no, think they would because they said they wanted, like wanted to change. The NHL wants to do their own thing because you go on the NHL site or their shop. Well, oh, we have the Black History Month. We play for equality. No, no, no you, you don't because you don't want to work with these organizations. That... No. no, and it's and it's going to continue to happen. But it's just one of those things where it's like the league is going to do what they want to do. And the same thing happened with the Coyotes, like like with their arena thing. Like they are fighting so hard to keep air like the Coyotes in Arizona, and it's like it's not working out. So not working. you can go through like what happened with the Coyotes in their arena if you want to kind of take it from here so they pretty much got kicked out of glendale uh they weren't re- like Glen- city of glendale they're not renewing their lease on on because they were going year by year hoping that they would see a profit turn yeah but Nothing. they didn't pay they didn't pay <laughs> yeah because they're not, they they're not rent. making money they're not so they're not paying rent on the arena it's not a team-owned arena it's a city-owned arena yeah meanwhile the, the yotes they think that they're gonna have a, a building built in what two tempe Tempe, that's where it is. So for the next, what, three years, they're playing out of a 5,000-seat arena that's supposed to be built for Arizona State University? If I'm Arizona State University, absolutely I'll take the Coyotes. And, and, and they came in and they came out and said, like, that like Arizona State is the main is the thing. Main they are not there. The Coyotes have to work around their schedule. And yeah. that they're making profits on everything. And it's like, you know what? Good for them. They literally are going to suck move the, by the coyotes university. dry. Yeah. yeah. So the arena here in Windsor is bigger than where the coyotes are going to play. Yes. That's fucked. It's the coyotes honestly, have though, been a dying franchise since 1996. Right. They, <laughs> since they got there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see exactly. There. Exactly. Since they got there's been no success. They went bankrupt and stuff. Gary Bettman, this is Gary Bettman's play toy. It's not working out, Gary. Just fucking move. If you don't want to move into Quebec where they have an arena that's ready, okay, fine. Houston is ready to go. Uh, Kansas City is ready to go. Like, God damn. Like, I would, Hartford even. But no, like, I Hartford, I, I've i seen the, the pros and cons of there. But sure. just ah, make it happen. Oh, my God. You just snap your pencil in half? Yeah. Oh my God. So much anger. No, I just, I, I don't like as a hockey fan, Arizona is a dying market. They have sick jerseys. Great for Arizona state. Like for the I University just think but... here's what I'll say. A counterpoint to you. I think it's going to be kind of cool. Oh because... yeah. Cause they might, they actually might fill half of the arena. Now. <laughs> half of the arena. <laughs> like, half you see what Brad Marsh, like uh Marsh, yeah. he's such a fucking weasel and he's like chirping all these things. Like, the hurricanes twitter and all that then yeah he, that's why they're still the that's why we pay x amount in escrow because yeah. you guys <laughs> but then he tweets out something to the, to the coyotes oh now they'll only have to give away 4500 free tickets to sell out a game well the thing is and i mean i don't really like going to the financial side of like the league because i don't really know that much but like they have to have profit sharing because most of these teams are not profitable the profits are made by like five six of the teams maybe like in terms of like attendance and stuff like that. But yeah. I think the atmosphere in Arizona in this smaller arena will be more of a college type atmosphere. Like if you talk about Michigan and Yoast ice arena and like the smaller arenas where it's loud and it's, and it's right on top of you, I think it'll be kind of neat instead of being in that huge arena where it's, you know, it's not sold out and it's, it's going to be, empty. A, it's going to be, be kind of neat. College game 2.0. I think it'll be cool. Honestly, I think it'll the only be thing that you're where... missing is the band. Dude, they should they should get a band. They really if should. I'm the Dude, Coyotes. I'm the Coyotes. Make it that atmosphere. Have like a student section. Like make it make it almost like Arizona State, and just have it like there's nothing like that in the NHL. So as, as stupid as this is, and as and as like funny as your rant was, I think they could use this as an opportunity to it is, do something different and something as a temporary fun. thing. They can't play permanently there though. No, th- well. Like, they, they have they'll have to move. Well, yeah, they're, they're going never... to, but that's the point. They're gonna build a new arena. No, out of Arizona. It's not working in Arizona. Dude, they're doing it in, they're building it in Tempe, you just said. Yeah, well, they, no, they're that one's not even finalized. They're trying to get that finalized. I, okay, I but I if they do, then that's fine. Leave them. <laughs> Who gives a shit? Like, that's the thing, is like you're just gonna keep moving franchises around, and then it's just like just leave them alone then. Honestly, like 
they've been on death's door like for 15 years and they're still here they're not going anywhere it's so this whole moving the quebec thing is kind of like just cool it like because they're not they're not going anywhere i'm going to never put another team another team in canada i don't think so no he won't they got as much as there's there's really no other place it'd be quebec city or like another one in toronto which is stupid but that's oh, it, that's it. Or you then, go to like Regina. Like there's no there's no market that's gonna hey, you know, be able to do that. Saskatchewan almost got the blues back in like the sixties or seventies. So yeah, I mean, but like th- that's the thing with like a lot of the Sunbelt teams, right? Like that was the the thing where you know people thought like, oh, there's no way that hockey's gonna work in Anaheim. There's no way hockey's gonna work in Dallas or or Tampa Bay or Florida, right? Carolina but, but the thing is is like it, it is the last two Stanley Cup champions Tampa Bay Lightning you know this year Florida they're insane look, they're, they're nasty look, man Dallas they have a they have a cup the Ducks yeah, well they, they all do the cup. Ducks have one too the but, but right but now it's kind of like something where think about the Panthers we're gonna break down Florida because they're the top team in the league right now they have the leading scorer Huberto um they haven't won a cup they made the finals in 96 they had but, John Van fucking Beesbrook but this is something where they didn't have really attendance either. They've never really been relevant ever. I mean, they've had, they've had players, you know, Luongo, yeah. Ole Jokinen, like they've had got Pavel Murray, Murray. They've Yagen. had players like that. Now they finally have got to that point where they're at the top. And I mean, to, to be honest with you, I don't know why it wasn't obvious at the start. Cause looking at this team, they are insanely good. And I'm going to pull up, um, We'll pull up a, let's see, there's their stats. Okay. Okay. So looking through their statistics, so Jonathan Huberto career year, I mean, he's leading the league in points, 64 points in 47 games. And you just look down their scoring here. And obviously because they're a really good team, they're going to have a lot of points. Right. And I mean, it's pretty stacked up. I mean, Ekblad defenseman point per game. Uh, Talk about Carter Verhage. Like that's someone that got a, a chance somewhere else. Right, one I think from Tampa Bay, went to Florida. I mean, been unbelievably good. Um, Anthony Duclair, like total yep. like reincarnation of his game. Anton yep. Lundell is a rookie. Sam Bennett came from Calgary, right? Like he wasn't supposed to have thirty points in in thirty seven games, right? No. Uh, like Mason Marchman, look at this guy's a rookie too. He's got a point per game. Is he a rookie? Maybe he's not. I don't know. Um, but like you look down the list, they've got some players and, uh, Hey, Frankie V, how you doing? Ole, Ole Levy, there's your boy. Oh, God. He's a oh yeah. Boy. Jumbo. He's having a terrible year. Um, uh, he should have, have Thornton. 36 years ago, but, but look at Bobrovsky having a good season, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, Spencer Knight's a younger guy too. That's going to be coming up, obviously struggling a little bit cause he's young. Uh, but he was also like, if, okay. If, if they didn't have the expansion draft, you know, it would be what's his face in there. Right. From, uh, Seattle goalie. Drager? Oh yeah, Drager, yeah. Um, which I think is fine losing him. Okay, I'm gonna look at uh their injuries first. They only have two, like Nola Cherry, Marcus Nudavara. So those guys would be in the lineup. Um okay, let's look. So right now, like Huberto, Barkov, Duclair. They they got rid of the uh, rankings, eh? Did you notice that? Yeah, they- you know, you notice who's not dressed um, in any of those lines? Joe? Yeah. Jumbo, yeah. Does it say scratches or he's just not? Oh, he's just not even on here. Um, okay. So the, the top two lines are, are terrific, right? Actually, I'd say the top three, honestly, all four lines. I love this team. Like they have have a good, they have a solid team. Yeah. And, uh, like Sam Reinhart, another guy that came from Buffalo and like is now playing really well. Anton Lundell's a rookie. Marchman's a young guy. Lomberg has been very effective in that bottom role. I don't really know anything about this loose Tarainen guy. And Vertrano has been around for a second, but like that is a solid line. One of our random players of the uh, of but, the week. But I guess you know I'll take that back. I, I, if I looked at this team at the beginning of the year, I wouldn't have I would have picked this. They're all no. having awesome years, and I mean t- Tippett's a young guy too. Uh, and then on defense, I mean it, it's not that it's not that impressive. <laughs> it really isn't. Like Weegar's having a great year. Ekblad's really good. These four. Like Montour was a good pickup for them. Forsling obviously is playing well. And then you got like, I don't know who this chat chase Prisky guy is like, they're just a great team. Like where they don't have, like they have their superstars up at the top. The hell, yeah. They have their superstars, but then it just gels together. Everything just gels. See, and... Here's something where, um, and I, if I would 
be able to pull up their advanced stats. That'll be kind of interesting to see because I want to see where a lot of their like goals are coming from, where their defense is coming from, because that might be a system thing too, right? Yeah. It's uh salary cap wise. Can they keep this up? Right. I mean, how long, if they're going to be this good, how long are they going to be this good? And uh, it looks like it's going to be for a second because uh, they have their, their top guys locked up. Reinhardt's there for three years. I mean, Barkov just signed a huge extension. Um, Huberto's going to next year. Thing, Huberto's gonna get paid after next year. So your window is probably until next year until you'll have to make a move. And obviously losing for 2.5 would be nice. Um, goes 700 for Hagee signed a big deal too. So that's where that money's going. Right? But then you're going to, you're going to have Owen tip it on a, he's an RFA. Marchment too. Like you're going to have to, Oh, Marchment's a UFA. He's 26. I, he, so he's been around. He had a game where he had like six points or something, seven points. You see that they won like nine to two. <laughs> Ekblad is signed for another uh, three years. Montour is there for a couple. We got, so their their top five. Is their all defense signed. is, is, yeah, locking for a couple of years there. And then obviously Bob they have for uh, this is the problem right here, I think. Is yeah. you hope that uh now uh Spencer Knight is not on this, but um you you hope that Spencer Knight is gonna be your starter eventually, but I just don't know what you do with this money. That's a lot of million money because Bobrovsky's you know, thirty three. You do not need to pay a goalie ten million dollars. You don't. And you're in the yeah, we're in the age where it's very, very rare. Um, I mean, even like Tuka Rask retired, he was making a lot of money too. And, you know, unfortunately his, uh, comeback came up short, but yeah. Um, oh, we're even missing Hornquist and uh, Mammon. They've had, they're both uh, usually in the lineup too. So they weren't on the daily face off there. It's dead cap. And even this too, like, um, the Yandel buyout, Scott Darling, that that's not a big deal, but, um, after that, after next season without Yandles, that'll be okay too. You gain four million there, but uh... they'll they'll have to do a little bit of a tap dance. I mean, they're they're draft picks. Uh, that this is what happens with good teams, right? You don't have your top picks because you exactly. traded them Price away. Picks for uh, players. Nope. Um, let's see where this first round pick went. Uh, oh, Christian Dvorak. Uh, I don't understand. Oh wait. Oh, it's a Sam Reinhardt. Okay, that's a great trade. I'll, like I would, too, I would do that too. I'll give a first round to, to take Reinhardt, right? All right. Would you? Why not? He's been playing. No. And then even their like second pick here. Let's see who uh, they got with this. Load. Christian Dvorak. Sam Bennett. So that's that's not bad either. You know, you picked up two guys for for picks that were going to be. And you low. got a pick out of it too. Yeah, it's going to be like the 60th overall pick yeah. or 64th for Sam Bennett, and you're like 32 for like for Sam Reinhardt. That's pretty good. I so I, I I like the how the Panthers are built. I don't know like how they can keep sustaining this. I mean, they're obviously very very good. Um, so the, they got this year, they'll next year. Then obviously the big thing will be what they do with you, real. Like it's and and out of these guys. uh, you know, obviously Bobrovsky is almost unmovable. If he still plays the way he's playing, then fine. But at, at one point, hey, you're gonna have to free up some space. Looking for a goalie. Yeah, they're. You know what? I think I think they're they're good for next year. They'll be fine because you can you can move on from Vertrano. Uh, you know, obviously, like Tippett's not gonna get paid that much. All those guys basically that are RFA aren't gonna get a huge raise. They'll no. they'll make a you little have, more. UFAs you could let go. And then you probably have some guys you could call up that would, would plug those few holes. You still have your top five D like you're loaded up for next year as well. Um, and then, you know, I think cap space, they're probably right up to it. Right. Deadline cap space. They got four mil. They could do something with that right. for sure. If they want be a team to watch that deadline. The thing is, is they, they don't have a lot to move just because they've already moved their first two picks. Yeah. Um, to, to grab assets for this season, which is why they are where they are. So do they have to do anything that crazy at the deadline? Uh, I don't not. think so. I mean, if I were them, I'd probably look at maybe grabbing another defenseman. Yeah. You can always like said, if, if I'm Florida, yeah, you want to grab, make sure your defense is solid going into the playoff run. Yeah. You're Just top, have a little more depth, right? Because top you, six like are, are solid. You're, you're, even your bottom six, it's not bad. It's uh, obviously, they, they, they do what they would, they could like 
I don't know. They're... Yeah, getting getting new Devara back oh, will, will be nice too. Like when if, if when he comes back, because then your top six are pretty you know established. The nice thing that I see with this team, uh, that you know you, you you'll see this a lot more when teams are building, and this is why I like it. All these guys, 26, 26, 28, 25 years old, 26, 27, 26. Uh, they're all mid 20s, even their defensemen, their top four, 26, 27, 28, 25. Even with 42 year old Joe Thornton, their average but, age is 26 and a half, the forwards. But the forwards, yeah. But but that's something that you're going to see a lot more of because it's just, it's, it's a younger guy's game now. You're going to have, you'll have Joe Thornton's still. You'll still have guys that are 38, like Joe Pavelski is still really good at 38, but it's going to be a lot more rare. Auger was there. It's going to be a lot more rare to see that. Uh, but you're going to have teams like this that, you know, you're going to have guys like Anton Lundell come in and just like, oh my God, we're good. But then this kid's awesome too. It's like, holy crap. I mean, now we're, you know, now we're cooking. Um, and looking for players like a Carter Verhage, where, you know, he's in a situation where you look at him and go, he needs a change of scenery. He needs, a, you know, a top six role and he'll be awesome. Uh, that's kind of what I felt happened with like Robbie Fabry with Detroit because he wasn't getting that shot with St. Louis and Eisman gave up like Della Rose to get Fabry and he's like a top six guy. Right. So that's just like trying to, and that's more scouting and figuring out which guys on other teams would have more worth on your team than on the team they are now. And, and then you sign them a little bit more long-term, a three-year deal. I like that for Verhage, right? For a guy that's a, almost a point per game. That's pretty good. And Barkov, I'll pay him whatever he wants. That guy's insanely <laughs> good too. 10 mil. Fuck it. Here you go. And yeah. that's probably what, what, uh, what Huberto will get too. but yeah. that's, this is this another thing. You got one more year of 5.9 from Huberto. That's like one of the best deals in the league right now. And then you have to make a decision. I think, you know, with Florida, you have to sign him. He's going to be 27 or no, he'll be 29. That's going to be tough because you're getting into a point where do you give him the eight year deal? And then he's going to be 36 at the end of it. And you're paying him 10 mil because that's where you get into problems. Right. Yeah. But you also don't want to lose him. So, and that's where I think GMs where I usually say you're signing him, thinking you're probably not going to be there at the end of that contract. You know what I mean? Because their GM is, I think, uh, is it Zito? Bill uh, Zito? I think that's who it is. Like, he signed Barkov to this deal, right? Let's see how long it is. I, I bet you it's eight years. Why is it showing me this? That That is not what I wanted. Uh, any, anywho, um, <laughs> he's got a deal. Where does it say? It's yeah, Bill's Oh, 29-30, yeah. So they sign him for like seven, eight years. But like, he's not going to be there by the end of that. I mean, if they don't win it in the next two, three years, I mean, does he stay? That's something that you have to think about, right? You sign these guys to keep them, and then, you know, the other GM that comes in cleans up the mess. Or makes it worse, if you're Edmund. Yeah, or, or makes it worse. That's actually, that's actually it. Like, some of the stuff with Edmonton, it's Peter Shirelli. Oh, some it, of it yeah. is still that, right? And I mean, you know, uh, there's some stuff where it's just like, you know, the Zach Cassian signing didn't make sense. The Nugent Hopkins, like, extension, okay. I mean, it's decent term, but it's eight years. Like, how long's not going to be there? Probably not after this year. Or the, you know, like, so, but is that something where it's like, you look at Nugent, it's like, yeah, but I'll take him for that. You know, like, he's yeah. still a good player. He's a nice, awesome second line player. I'll pay him that because he still produces. You get him outside out of Edmonton, and I bet you he, he has a career like he has a a resurgence. He could. Well, that's a thing. Like change of scenery, but sometimes it can go the other way. But I just I like how Florida somehow managed to do this kind of under the under the radar. Because they're not I never would have thought it. They're not a big market team. They're not a. Uh... That's what we were talking about. Like, dude, what if this was? What if this team was wearing Arizona Coyotes jerseys and playing in? ASU arena, they'd be fucking insanely good. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you're playing, I think. It would be loud, just like at the waste management open in floor in uh, Arizona. Yeah, exactly. So I I I think the way that teams are built now is just so much different. And I think it's past Ken Holland by. And I think it'll pass a lot of GMs by a lot of the older ones. A lot, yeah, that's were around thing, for a right? while. We say it's the yeah. old school way or whatever. If you, you have, have to adapt, it's a, man. It's an old school non- 
non-cap GM. And even some of these rentals, it's like, I feel like at the deadline now, you're going to see a lot more of like teams that are like, like Florida or a team that's clearly number one going for these rentals. Because if you're a team that's slightly on the fringe, I don't know if you want to give up those picks now, man, because these young kids can play now and you're seeing it more and more and more with a lot of these players, maybe like getting drafted, then they play one year like in Europe or pro and they come over and they're like immediately a part of your team. Right. Yeah. There's there's a whole list of them. The game has adapted a lot more to that style where it's kind of like, you don't have to like, there's some guys where it's like, you don't have to go down to the minors, pay your dues and earn it. No, no, no. You're our best player. You're playing. You know what I mean? Like you're in Raymond and cider. This is the craziest thing at the beginning of the year. I think we were probably talking about if they were going to make the team. Yeah. They were their best players. Of course they're going to make it. Right. But I didn't know. Cause I don't know anything <laughs> and neither just, do you. <laughs> no, we just talk shit and uh, yeah. hope the best. Yeah. It's all reactive. Hey, so, go, so our next episode, because if the deadline is roughly a month away, we'll do our, uh, we'll do our list again. Like we did last that's, year. That's that was what a lot I was of fun. We'll probably do another list episode. And I uh, feel like we should do that soon because I feel like last time it was pretty close where we could have just looked at someone else's list. And been like, oh, here's what it is. No, we well, went through every single team, figured out who's buying, who's selling, how much cap space do they have, which players would be on the market, and where do we think they're going? And then we all predict that was a lot of fun, and I think we should do that again. That's I'm I'm down to do that again. So we got to do. I, I think a lot like of yeah, camera, a lot God, of, uh, we got to get the Monday off. That's what we got to do. I'm putting it in on uh, when I'm in I'm work. Going to do it tomorrow, hundred yeah. percent, because. Uh, and I, maybe we'll try and we'll talk about like what we want to do because what we did last year was just like reacting to the trades and just cut it into like one pod. I don't really think doing like a live stream really is necessary, but maybe we can do that again where we just kind of set it up and uh, we, uh, we have a, uh, a whole day. We have, uh, we have TSN and Sportsnet on and we have a uh, Calgary flames insider, Andrew Hurst. We got it. Honestly, that's another thing too, is we got to get a couple of the guys and be like, Hey, uh, if there's a trade, like we're, we're calling you, we need yeah. to get you on the horn. Get get you to bring it down. Yeah. We get Hursty for, yeah. for Calgary, Randy for Anaheim. Yeah. Randy's in the middle of Montreal of, uh, guys. Randy's in the middle of doing of work, whatever. Hey, Randy was so well. Colorado. We can get zinger. You know what I mean? Well, well, well we got some guys, we got get some hookups. Luke. Yeah. John so, Luke, PSN, Montreal. <laughs> so why you call him Luke? That'll be the Ben Chirot. I'll get him to break down the Ben Chirot trade. <laughs> ben Chariot. I said, hey, they picked up Andrew Hammond uh, the other day. And he's like, good. Anybody but Caden Primo, the kid stinks. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> like, I don't think anything is going to help him now. But hey, Marty St. Louis, that's something else we didn't really talk about. Not that we have to break yeah. that down. Mr. Cavs himself. We didn't really have anything else on the on the the uh, uh, show sheet. Montreal Canadiens, temp- interim head coach, Martin St. Louis. Honestly, what do you, what do you think about how that went down? Uh, I didn't think he was going to like, he came out of nowhere for me uh, that he was the guy, that he's the guy. Yeah. But, I, I, uh, Ducharme, uh, I mean, they said he was going to go to the end of the year. Cause here's the thing. Like Montreal is not going anywhere. They, no, that is pretty no incredible. Price, from no Weber. Yeah, but it's not even that. It's just like they they were flawed last year, even though they made the final. And I told Lou that too. I was like, listen, man, I don't get it. No, <laughs> like last, last they're on fire. Price well. Price carried them there. They played well, but uh, he's obviously outmatched against Tampa. But I, I still was like, I don't understand. Like this team isn't as good as they're playing right now. And well, last year it now. It was but, the Canadian division last year. So it was it like was they- different. It was different, but like, um, it, it, you know, getting Ducharme out of there early was like a telltale sign of like, we have to do something. Marty St. Louis is a PR move. Let's, let's get that out of the way. It's an absolute PR move because you're getting a NHL. He's in the hall of fame, correct? I believe he is. 20 should be. He, uh, has his jersey retired by Tampa. He's got a Stanley cup, uh, gold medal you know, all that stuff, but you know, and he's, and he's like, you know, he's French, you know, and he's, it's one of those things where it's like, Oh my God, Marty St. Louis, the coach of Montreal. That's awesome. And they said interim. Right. And I said, okay, like, let's just kind of say, is, is he hall of famer? Yeah. 2018. Hall yeah. Of Fame. Um, 
and I think, yeah, it's a great PR move because here's the thing. It's a, it's a win-win for Montreal. Like you, you, you got rid of Ducharme, you got a new guy in there, you know, how, how is he going to do worse? You know, um, Dude, this is his first actual coaching job itself. Right. So yeah. Cause he was a consultant in Columbus with Tortorella. Yeah. Um, who coached him in uh, Tampa Bay and Tampa in New York. I, if I'm not mistaken, when he was with the Rangers, was Tortorella there? Yeah. I bet she was. So yeah. he was with Torts with Columbus. And then, yeah, so he got pulled off like a peewee team coaching. <laughs> coach. But here's the thing. Um, watching, I watched a little bit of the first game uh, that Montreal had with St. Louis. Now they lost, I think they lost five to two, but they outshot whoever it was, like two to one, basically. They had like 40-something shots. They were playing more loose. They were, uh, and, and basically the only thing that I, I saw that was different was they weren't playing zone defense. They played man defense. That's all they did. Hmm. And he allowed the players to kind of like, he was talking in his press conference about making reads. He said it like 300 times about, I'd rather a player make a read on a play and be wrong than not make it at all. Because that was something where, in, in talking with Lou, is like they're scared to make a play. Like they're scared to screw up. You know, they look discombobulated. They don't know where to be. So it's you a know, coaching maybe, thing. And now that, now that they, the players have been told that, like, okay, you know what? Don't be afraid to make if you if you get fine, burned, whatever. Dude. Yeah, not 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 whatever, but like learn. No, yeah, no, like whatever. But... Make the play. Like you yeah. need your. He said you need your skill guys don't, don't, to don't, do it. Don't. He said, and that's something that he had as a player. He said, "What when I played for coaches that allowed me to use my skill." I played a lot better than if I was in a system where you're, you're forcing that like a square peg into a round hole, like yeah. it's not going to work, you know? So you have, if you're part of the system, that's fine to have a structure, but also to allow players to have different avenues off of that structure to be creative. I need to, to get use their here. skill. I can't just go that well, allow me to go that well, way. It's to- like, you can't coach every player exactly the same. And that's something like, that's something I learned when I was coaching these Bantam and midget kids. It's like, not every player is the same. You know, this kid, that's a defenseman. You know, we had a kid when I coach bell river that um, like he went and played junior C eventually. And he was good. He carried the puck very smooth, like honestly, and you don't want to compare a kid to, but like, he kind of played like Eric Carlson slightly, or he could just skate it and he'd be fine. Or he could make the play. He could fuck up, but then he'd get he could make up for his own mistake. Yeah. You can't coach that kid the same as the third line defenseman guy that doesn't have those skills. That is very one dimensional. You have to coach them separately. So you know, anytime that we were like, "Hey, we're gonna do this drill. Like, we're gonna work on a system like a breakout, right?" Yeah. And you know, I'd have to tell our head coach sometimes, like, "Hey, like." this kid can't do it. Like he won't be able to do that. It, we need to simplify it for him specifically and go, Hey, in this situation, you're hitting this guy with a pass or you're going glass and out. That's all you're doing. And if you do that, you're going to play. Perfect. <laughs> but the other kid, you know, we might be going like, okay, here's your two options. You can pass it. You can skate it. And that's it. This other kid, we could go, you have your left winger. You have your centerman coming. You can skate it. You can regroup. You can like you have all these options because we know you're more capable of making yeah, the yeah, right more. decision in that situation more than this other guy, right? So, you know, sometimes you have to simplify it for certain guys, but at the same time, unleash your talent. Let Cole Caulfield do what he needs to do. Let Suzuki run wild. You know, let Gallagher be a pest. You know, you know, even Petrie on the back end. Let him make a play. You know, uh, so that they can use what they are as players because when you watch the Habs with Ducharme, every player was the same. It yeah. was a carbon copy. They all played exactly the same and there was no soul to it. There's no heart, which is so like weird because guy. he was, he was coaching them in, in the, uh, in the playoffs, in the which is weird because remember Ducharme was out for a whole series, the whole COVID thing. I think he had COVID oh, yeah. or something and like he wasn't allowed to, and they had, uh, I think it was Luke Richardson, like coached them through and they, they won a whole series without them. Right. To make the final. I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering that right. But, you know, worst case scenario, it doesn't work out. They move on. They find someone else, right? Yeah, best case scenario. Right now, it's definitely a PR move. Best case scenario, St. Louis is an awesome players coach. And he's a bridge to, to when they get better again, you know? It's like, are you okay coaching these this team when they're not that good? Can you get the best out of these guys, even though you don't have that much talent around you, you know? 
that's that's where I think Marty St. Louis would be awesome as a coach is to go, hey guys, I've been through this shit. <laughs> like, yeah. I, you know, even through the ringer, it's it happens. Here's how we're gonna keep going, you know. So, change is nice. Uh, Montreal clearly needed it. I don't think they could have gone the whole season with Ducharme because he wasn't changing anything. He didn't change any systems. So it was like, this was something that had to happen. And unfortunately, see you later, bud. But yeah, I think that's kind of the whole thing with the Habs and St. Louis. Yeah. But uh, how about your Canucks? Anything anything new in Vancouver land or uh. I haven't following them at all, but I haven't really been following too much lately. I said, yeah, just, Boudreaux kind of uh, sizzling out a little bit here. Or? No, no, they're, they're still playing well. Like they had a, a big win against the Leafs last night. Uh, okay. Dr. Demko with 50 plus saves. Oh, wow. Well, anytime uh, the Leafs lose, that's fun. Yeah. So, no, they, they've, been, they've been playing solid. Uh, said, I think, like, going back to your trade deadline, like the teams that are maybe fringe playoff. Would I want to see them buy? I don't Stupid. know. Don't do it. Don't like. They're not built to win right now. No, I would say. They're a team. There's that a has lot to... of talk about best for getting traded. So they're a team that has to figure out what they're doing, you know, because they weren't that good at the beginning. They got Boudreaux. They got hot, you know, but what, which team are you? Yeah. Is it this one? Like, or I was it the one before? Like where are you going to come? Talk, there's talks on, on, uh, Besser getting traded, uh, Connor Garland getting traded. Like, there's a lot of interest in JT Miller as well because he's mm-hmm. been playing amazing again. But... Do you, yeah, do you take something for him now? Because again, you know, is he part of your future going forward? Even though he's one of your best guys, do you get the assets for him now? You know, before depending on what the assets, you got to take the calls. You have to take the calls and see oh, yeah. what they'd, they'd be stupid not to. And then even now, like hiring the GM and uh, assistant GM, it's going to be – this trade deadline for Vancouver will be interesting. It'll be interesting. And that's something, like I said, we'll break that down. We'll go through all the teams, all the players. We'll create our list. Me and Bobo will, will rank them again so that we have our list. I mean, what, what, our number one guy last year was David Savard. Yeah. Right? And Tampa got him, and now he's in Montreal floundering. So hey, uh, Detroit caught him, and then they flipped him to Tampa. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the the Mark, the uh, Savard era in Detroit was a quick one, but uh, hey, maybe we'll have some crazy trades. You know, the Mantha one was was like the, was, yeah. the shocker of the day. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think Detroit's going to be that active this year, to be honest. Just because they're right in the middle, guys that they thought they were going to trade. Like I feel like they should hang on. One guy was uh, Nemesnikov. Uh, he's having a fantastic season. Uh, I mean, it's sell high. It's sell high on him, but he loves being a Red Wing, clearly. And I feel like that's a guy you could keep around pretty cheap for the next year or two and be in the top nine, and he'll be effective. And even if you bump him to the fourth line, he'll still be effective. I think he's a player that you probably keep around. But, like, that was someone where I was like, they might trade him. Robbie Fabry signed an extension. He's not going anywhere. But the thing is, like, Eiserman has shown that he'll sign someone to extension and then gas and then, immediately. So it doesn't really matter that much. But – uh you know, there's questions about Zadina. Like, uh, do we do we move him? You know, at the at right now, I think you're selling low on him, definitely. But you know, he's been playing well now. He's been on the top line playing well. But they have a few guys that uh, you know they could they could move on. But like Nick Letty, he was like a minus twenty five this year. He's not he's not what I thought he would be. No. Um, are you going to get a second round pick like you gave up for him? Probably not. But Mark Stahl, uh, no one wants him. Uh, <laughs> Thank but, you. I don't think they're going to make any moves. I mean, if it was, if it Miley is, it might deals. be a weird, like, uh, no, it might be like a Mantha type thing where it's like, they trade a guy to get a guy. Like that would be something I could see. They're not going to give any the Kaiser stuff, but God. Oh my God. No, they're just going to let him wear out his welcome. They need to Kaiser for a third round pick. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll discuss all that on a further pod at one point. This is nice to actually get this one done. Cause I said, it's been, uh, it's been, almost, it's been like almost four weeks. Yeah. To, before we leave, I've been busy. Is it a Super Bowl Sunday? Who do you have winning tonight? I don't care. I'm gonna have chili dogs and uh, and some drinks. And Just sit uh, on a beach and eat hot dogs. No, it's nice. I don't have a dog in this fight. I really don't. I mean, I I, I think uh, I think it would be fun to see the Bengals win because it's never. I that's the thing. People at the beginning of the players like, who do you think's gonna win? I'm like, it's never who you think. 
it's always it's always someone you know that'll be well, how the hell are they there the cincinnati is a fun team to watch man joey burrow they, they are. Uh, you know jamar, jamar chase, chase and all those guys it's fun to watch them because they're a dynamic team at the same time you know the rams with with cooper cup and obj stafford and their defense with their aaron defense, donald von miller. sue von miller uh, uh jalen ramsey who you say sue yeah he's in town i'm an idiot wait who was i thinking of aaron donald I thought he was with uh, with L.A. I'm an idiot. No, he played in L.A. two years ago or he last did. year. Did he? That's yeah. that's what I'm that's what I'm remembering then. Anyway, this is why we do a hockey pod. But no, oh, it's gonna be it's, like I just want to say a good the, the stupidest thing that I've seen though is those Detroit Rams T-shirts. So embarrassing. Okay, I'm gonna just I'll tell you uh, the Stafford thing. Like anybody that's a Lions fan that is taking this as a Lions victory, you're a moron. You know I. What? I understand if Stafford's one of your favorite players and you're kind of like wanting him to He's win. Done a lot That's for great. Detroit. I get it. But yes. you're not a Rams fan. And you, this is not a win for Detroit. If anything, this is the biggest embarrassment for your franchise that this guy left and immediately is going to win a Super Bowl. That's Just embarrassing. Like Verlander going to Houston. Yeah, but that wasn't the same because, because Detroit was very successful with him. They just never – they never yeah. won. Like they got there twice, you know, like, so that's not the same Stafford in, in his time with the lions didn't win a playoff game. So now, yeah, now he's going and to all Super of a sudden Bowl. he's going to Super Bowl with a different team. Cooper cup just magically has a career year. Why do you think that was? <laughs> he's got a competent quarterback, right? So 27, 24 Rams win. Stafford gets the MVP. Detroit fans are celebrating and also crying. Um, and I, I'll, I want to see a shootout. Um, the Gatorade color will be blue and the coin flip will be tails. And, uh, over Cincinnati is, Cincinnati is going to, oh, fuck man. I'm always bad at those. It's under it's at 90 seconds. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. I have, I'm taking, I took the under, uh, I'm going to go under. Yeah. And then Just uh, girl I would say at the, the white house and she did it in 86 seconds. So Cincinnati is going to score first. It'll be a field goal. And then the, the, the halftime show is going to be fire. Oh, fuck yeah. It's going to be good. Probably. I don't know. It'll be a spectacle, Shoot that's that. for sure. I don't think the music will be good, but it'll be a show. <laughs> what it's do you the thing. It's called the Super Bowl halftime show. It's not the Super Bowl halftime musical performance. You know, they're putting M&M, on that. And you know? Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, Kendrick. Like, come on. It's going to yeah, be it'll fun. Be, it'll be good. It's going to be so good. It'll be fun to watch it. Um, and then, yeah, we'll. Uh, that's all I'm doing tonight. It's going to be nice. So. Until uh, until we meet again, buddy, we will uh, we'll get back at it. Probably do another one before the trade deadline. Uh, so follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube if you want to watch this. And then we have we're obviously on Spotify and Apple iTunes or Apple uh, Podcast, sorry. And Ooh, uh, all the fun shit. And check out the website if you want. It looks cool. HealthyScratch.ca. Until next time, Bushy and Bobo Show. I'm Bushy, that's Bobo. We'll see you guys next time. Football!